Pastor's Perspective on the Marketplace Network. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining me on Pastor's Perspective. I'll be your host. I'm Dr. Ken, and you're watching the Marketplace Network. I've got a tremendous program. I'm so excited. She's come all the way down from Washington to come see us, and we got a special guest that came all the way from North Carolina. Who am I talking about? The General herself, <laughs> Apostle Alberta. Thank you so much for joining me. But our special guest, I want to get right to him because he's got something hot for us to hear. It's the psalmist himself. That's right, Michael John's with us here tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for now, Michael. You got a new. This is a new song we haven't heard. Can you tell me a little bit about it? I wrote a song, an evangelistic song. I I actually got the idea when I was visiting Alberta, and I practiced it and finished it up in uh, Washington State yeah. when I visited her about yeah. three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! Finished all the lyrics. It's called Desperately. Can we hear uh, it? Yeah, I, I'd like to do it. I, can I do it last? Uh, yes. Yeah. I'll what, you got something now, though, right? Yeah, I do. Tell uh, us what that is. Yeah. Uh, let me talk about Desperately is an evangelistic song. Mm -hmm. How God calls us when we were first. It says in the, it talks in the Bible about how he knew us in the womb and he called us before we, we came. So it's a song about him calling us our whole lives. And I hope those that don't know the Lord come to it through this song. Amen. It's called Amen. Desperately, and I'll do that at the end if that's okay. But what do you got for us now? Well, Alberta was talking about friendships. You want to talk about friendships real quick? Well, she's well, got more to say than this <laughs> that. Is it okay if you start us out so we get the anointing yeah. going? I yeah. could. Oh, please? Right. I could. And tell us what you're playing and what's it about. Yeah, yeah. well, uh, this song is called Up on Astro Lane. Ooh. It's, a, it's a rewrite uh, about a song that I did on my very first record. Okay. And, uh, you know, we all grew up children talking to God when we were young. Remember when you used to have those little intimate chats of the Lord when you were like three and four years old? How he used to speak to us when we were children? So when I grew up uh, in Philadelphia, there was a street called Astor Lane. Oh, wow. I used to walk down the street and have these little intimate chats with the Lord. And I remember how the blessing of God came upon me at such a young age. Yeah. Now I had, I had three friends uh, Joseph, Nicholas, Michael, and John, actually four, and those guys have all gone to be with the Lord. Oh, no. I, I dedicated this song to those guys that uh, we all knew each other, played baseball on Astor Lane, but we all knew Jesus, and the song ends with, with, a, with a tribute to them and, and calling out to God and saying, God, when I get to the other side in heaven, please let me be there with all my friends that I knew on Astor Lane. So this is a child. I love it. Are you Go guys for ready? it. Yeah. Um, let me, uh, how are we doing on, are we okay? So you guys ready for this? Up on Astor Lane. Seven years old, I'm ice cream cold. I'm in second grade today. Apple trees and big oak leaves on my way. I'm on a sidewalk bound for heaven just beyond the rain where I found Jesus and some friends on Astor Lane Astor Lane you're not to blame for the wandering of my soul this day when the man in me he couldn't believe Now that I'm alive again, things will never be the same for this life that was lost and found on Astor Lane. And there's a song I keep on singing about all my friends who've come and gone. Good friends on Astor Lane, Joseph, Nicholas, Michael, and John. But of all the friends I've ever known, on a sidewalk bound for heaven Just beyond the rain I found a friend in Jesus Up on Astor Lane and When my life is over And the good Lord's work is done I won't need A mansion near the sun 
cozy little corner will do me the same as I'm walking up and down on Astor Lane. And there's a song I keep on singing, dream I keep on dreaming, miles to go before I sleep tonight. Astor Lane, I'll be home. On a sidewalk bound for heaven, just beyond the rain, I'll be sitting in with Jesus and all my friends from Astor Lane. On a sidewalk bound for heaven, just beyond the rain, I'll be sitting in with Jesus and all my friends up on Astor Lane. Well done. That was really good. I really enjoyed that. Thank you. Well, uh, how long did it take you to write it? Uh, that was one of the first ones I wrote. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I wanted to write something about about God, how he came into my life as a young man, and so that's that's where up on Astor Lane. It's came. fabulous, sir. Thank it's you. really heartfelt. Yeah. It goes right along with the general's message. General, yes. what were we going to share with us tonight? I was going to talk about the downfalls and the good things about being friends. You have friends? <laughs> yeah, I have a few. Oh, okay. Go yeah, ahead. I, I met John, uh, Michael, Michael John at uh, Gemma Winger's. Oh, that's came. that famous apostle that has their <laughs> church in her house, right? Yeah. All right. There. And uh, Michael <laughs> came, and I didn't know him from anybody, and we became very good friends. Yes, he we even did. came to Washington, and they love him up there. And he is one of the best uh, ministers. He, he shows the love of Christ. He's good. And, and God, he, God just blessed us all through Michael. Amen. But if Jim hadn't introduced me to him, yes. I wouldn't have known him. Yeah. You know, and so how many of you know God sets up friendships? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. He does. Isn't that true? Teach it. And, you know, God wants us to be friends. Well, how do you know that, Alberta? You know what? In John 15, 14, Jesus called his disciples friends. Wow. He said, you're no longer a servant. He said, you're my friends. The Lord loves friendships. He really does. And... The people that you meet can play a, you know, play a real important role in your life. Now with Michael John, it seems like I've known him forever. Amen. But I just <laughs> met him not long ago, but God had a plan. And we got to follow God's plans with our friendships too. Like Victor and Amy, I stayed at their home. They treated me like gold, like mm -hmm. Gemma does, just wonderful. And then now my new brother, my new friend that yeah. Gemma's with tonight. Yeah. I mean, God set it up. Now we've been on the phone, and, and I called a couple of my friends, and they're also doing a, a ministry in Pakistan. Oh, okay. Chris and John, he got on the phone with them, and guess what? They bought a piece of land and a house right in where he's from, oh, in Pakistan. Oh, my goodness. Isn't that so something? God's got plans for friends. And we've got to, and that pastor back there, I've spoken it with his He's got a great group, too. Pastor and, Apostle Rick? Yeah, he's got a great group. And everybody here, you're my friends. But, you know, sometimes we get let down by friends, too. And that can be where it's kind of serious. But, you know, we make a covenant in marriage, but there's also a covenant in friendship. Mm -hmm. Wow. See? I'm in covenant with every one of you whether you like it or not. That's right. And, and I'm not married to you, but we're married in friendship. And friendships mean a lot to Jesus because he told the disciples, you're my friends now. And you can look it up later. There's many scriptures about uh, friends, how the Lord's saying you better be friends. Mm -hmm. And he said they're going to know your disciples by, by your love for each other. I love Jim. I've known her for years. She's put up with all kinds of things with me, and, and she remains my friend to this day. 
all of you. I expect you to be my friend. Michael John, I expect him go. to be my friend. How long? <laughs> Forever. Forever. <laughs> and, and, you know, Amy and Vic, all of you here in this room, you're my friends. There, especially, I'll tell you, Dr. Ken, oh my God, and Bishop, they bought me back into the media. I was out for a while. And I don't boast on it, but I've been on all three Christian channels for my own radio program. And I just thought, you know, I would just live it my way. So I told the Lord, I'm going to get a little office, and I'm just going to have my little Bible studies in there. And I might go to church once in a while, but I think I'll watch it on Sunday. Yeah. You know, blah, blah, blah. I could just see Jesus and the angels laughing, ha! Huh? <laughs> That's what she thinks she's going to do. But he changed it, and now they got me back in media, media, something I love. And you know, they see all kinds of places. I got a call from Syria, oh, from the Syria. base. Wow. They said, Alberta, we saw you on the base. Well, good, you know, you saw it. Wow, that's crazy. And then another brother of ours, Justin, he went overseas, he caught it. Ooh. And then uh, Virginia and all kinds of places, I'm getting calls from friends who didn't even know I existed anymore. Hey, we saw you on that platform. Wow. So we hand it to them. I love them so much. What are they? They're not only ones helping me, but they're my friends, and I love them. Do you know what? Uh, let's take uh, 1 Samuel 23, 16 through 18. How many of you know that Jonathan and David became friends? Oh, well, hallelujah. They became friends. And you know, they had every reason not to because Saul, that was Jonathan's dad. Mm -hmm. And Jonathan had to play two roles. He had to be nice to David, but also be nice to his dad. Mm -hmm. Anyway, mm. Uh, Jonathan and David made friends. And Jonathan said to David, now let's listen to this. He said, we have sworn to each other in the name of the Lord Almighty the Lord has witnessed this between me and you. They, he was talking, Jonathan was talking about how they made friends. And they, I can't give you all the words tonight, but they also made a covenant. They made a covenant. See, Jesus loves friendships. Otherwise, why would he said to the disciples, you're no longer servants, you're my friends. Wow. Look it up. Jesus said many times in many places, you're my friends. Well, I've had some good friends, and I've had some friends that, you know, and, but how many of you know, Matthew 18, Peter asked Jesus, how long, how many times do I have to forgive, forgive that cotton picking brother? No, I added that. How many times do I have to forgive him? Till seven times? See, they had a law that if you do it seven times, then you can go and do whatever you want to him. And Jesus said, oh, no, you don't, Peter. I'm wise to you. I added that. Jesus no. didn't say I know that. you rewrote the Bible. It's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> but Jesus said, oh, no, you don't, Peter. You're going to forgive 70 times 7 per day. Mm. And Peter brought, oh, well, shoot, now I can't curse that brother of it or whatever, you know. So... And Jonathan... Was and that in Alberta, verse 2, <laughs> chapter 3, by chance? Yeah, Jesus, forgive me, I do add some once in a while. Anyway, Jonathan and David had a covenant. And every friend of mine, I want to make a covenant mm -hmm. with them. Amen. I want to make sure my friendship lasts. Of course. Like with the brother I just met at Gemma's. I, I it seems like I've known him forever, all of you, but we're friends. And God loves it when we're friends. But you know what? We can also have trouble with friendships, too. And you know what? I had trouble with my whole board. I had a board. I had some names you would know who they are, you know, that were on my board. And all of a sudden, me and this minister got into it. He was the head. <laughs> Something happened, but I'm not going to say what. You know, one of my family members were a little wounded. But anyway, uh, so we got into it at a board meeting. How many know you don't do that? Amen. And I had to ride home with him that night. And he told me, he said, Alberta, by tomorrow morning, you'll have no ministry, period. 
I thought, you're kidding. He said, nope. And I said, and he wasn't kidding. Next day, I got on the phone and canceled all my meetings. I had a meeting with 400 people at the airport that all got canceled. Mm. So I said to myself, self, I'm done. If friends are like this I, in the ministry, then I don't want it. I didn't handle it right. Okay? I didn't. If I would have handled it right, I never would have did what I did. I'd have went to him the next day and say, I know you had my meetings canceled, but I forgive you. And I had a policeman on my board, too, Tim. Mm -hmm. And I slipped out of the ministry for a while. Mm -hmm. And one day, Tim called me up. He said, Alberta, I want you to meet you at Denny's. And he was the kind of cop. You better do what he said. <laughs> I said, OK, I'll meet you at Denny's. I sat there and cried for two hours. Wow. And this one minister had really hurt me. Oh, I guess none of you have ever been hurt by a minister. No. Ooh, you talk about a feud. And so he said, and we had lunch, and I cried and cried and cried. Mm -hmm. Then Tim said, oh, Alberta, come out to my truck. It's here. He said, get in my truck. Want me to handcuff you? Get in. I said, okay. He said, I'm, I said, where are we going, Tim? He said, to the garbage dump. <laughs> I said, what? He said, I'm going, taking you to the garbage dump. Just get in the truck. Huh? We go to the, the garbage dump. And he said, I'll get out of the truck. Tim and I had been ministering together for about 10 years, and I knew him by now. You better do what he says. So I got out, and he said, now, put your head over. Look over where I dumped my garbage. I said, Tim, that stinks. He said, so does your feud with that other ministers and your unforgiveness. It stinks like that wow. garbage. Anyway, he got out the garbage bags, and one by one, I named those ministers, and he threw them away. Do you know the next day I got a call from one and he said, Alberta, every time I prayed, God said, what about Alberta? I said, mm. what? He said, yeah. And he said, I'll do anything. I said, no, let's not advertise it. Let's just be friends again. But what I'm leading up to is recently, before I came to California, I'd been ministering to this minister, or ministering with him for about a year almost. Wow. And, and we got into it at the, <laughs> at the church. I'm, I'm shocked, <laughs> not you. And this brother and I, we had it out. And anyway, uh, uh, so the next day, he sent me a text. And I sent him a worse text. And I said a lot of things I didn't mean. How many of you know you get mad and you, this mouth just, mm -hmm. Your Bible says you better watch your mouth. This tongue in here is a dangerous weapon. So I let him have it. I thought, I'm letting this brother have it. Even though he had helped me so much <laughs> in the ministry, he had been such a help in the ministry, and I'd been a help to him. But we were in a major feud. Mm -hmm. And so I left to come to California, and oh, we kind of like sort of made peace. You know, like, well, I'll talk to you in public just to be polite, <laughs> but that's it. You know, I said, okay, brother. So anyway, I'm making a confession here. So anyway, so we leave, and we make peace kind of, sort of, you know, mm. pretty kind of, sort of. And I don't know about you, but I can have the Missouri temper. And I, he's one I never got into with any of my other brothers, but him and I can fight like cats and dogs. So <laughs> I'm down here and enjoying myself, and then God says, what about so-and-so? I said, what about him? God said, you better make up with him. I said, no. I said, it was his fault, and he can come to me first. How many of you know you don't do that with friends? Instead of saying, OK, Jesus, I'll make peace with him. Yes, I will. You know? And God mm. said, you better. Yes. He said, he said, both of you better, or you're going to be in trouble with me. Mm -hmm. The Lord said, and I thought, well, how can that be? 
I'm going to get in trouble when it was his fault. Mm. <laughs> and then he says it was my fault, right? No romance in the, in the friendship. No. Uh, you? No romance? <laughs> okay. No. That's for the book. Never mind. <laughs> so, we, so we became good friends. But anyway, so we had a feud before I left. And it was over something that happened in the church. How many of you know I'm being real with you tonight? Mm -hmm. Oh, Alberti, you look so innocent and sweet and blah, blah, blah. Guess what? We are all human. That's right. I We've, to I've heard you. your story. No. <laughs> yeah. Now, why don't we include Michael on this? What does he think about all this? Well, anything that Alberta says, I take, uh, I take, I take it in for, for real because she has wisdom. Amen. And basically what she's basically telling us is we need to love those that have hurt us. Well done, sir. And we need to have friendships as Christ has friendships with us, yes. no matter what we do to Teach him. it. And that's a good good wisdom and good philosophy, Alberta. Thank you so much. Yes, and, and so I argued with the Lord. I said, no, he started it. Mm -hmm. And if you ever want me to be friends with him again, he's going to have to come to me first. <laughs> And God said, okay, he said, I'm going to give you one more chance to be friends. Yes. He said, and if either one of you mess up, he said, you're going to be in trouble with me, both of you, your ministries mm -hmm. and everything. Oh. Mm. I still said to the Lord, well, every time I pray, it's like God would say, what about so-and-so? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, Lord, I'm done with him, you know. And then sometime I'd call them jerks or whatever, but anyway. <laughs> God made it plain. And you know what he said, too? Listen. He said, you're going to know, they're going to know that you're my disciples by your love. Yes, that's right. See, I, I got off the love walk with this brother. Yeah. I did. And blamed him. But I'm going to tell you, I come from a family of 10 girls and no boys. Mm -hmm. And we used to fight. I mean, we would fight, and I was in between them all. I was the fifth up or the fifth down, and I was skinny and little. They'd always beat me up first. And one day, Mama came, and she said, Hey, Alberta, you and your sister have been fighting. I said, It's her fault. And she said, No, it's her fault. And Mom said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. She said, I'm going to whip you both. <laughs> That's said, a good one. And because of time, said, because of time, dear, we have to allow Michael to finish that song. I'm just so okay. interested. And this will fit right in if we got to show yeah, no. love for each other. Yes. Yeah, go can ahead, you Michael. play that? Because I was, I've been waiting all night to hear this. Yeah, it's a new okay. release, right? A First new song. year on Marketplace Network. It was written, uh, I finished it when I was in uh, Albertus. Mm -hmm. uh, up in Alberta, doing a ministry with Alberta. Who was she fighting with there? She no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, he won't fight. Michael doesn't fight. Mm -hmm. He's too kind. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Alberta, thank you for having me. She was so nice to me. She provided me a place to stay for 10 days. Yeah. And uh, I had a lot of time on my hands, and I finished the song I've been working on for a year. Oh, whoa, a year? Yeah, you? Desperately. Oh, yeah. And uh, I'm going to try to do it without uh, messing up the lyrics. <laughs> and uh, whether these are the exact lyrics that will be recorded, it's, it's the prototype. So can I do it desperately? Please. Yeah, please. I love this song. Listen to it. Everyone. Uh, it's an evangelistic song about how God calls us when we're young. Please do it. And mm. continues to call us through our lives. And I'm hoping it'll, it'll touch those that don't know the Lord and, and will... Uh, will uh, Come Take it to heart. Yeah, okay. amen. Okay. Uh, let's speak. Okay. Okay, it goes like this. Desperately, let me take your hand to heaven. Desperately, let me be the keeper of your soul. From the moment of your birth, I knew you first, and I called you and still want you desperately. And there's a well on the hill, and the water's free. And let your broken roads lead to me. 
Cause there's just one bread of life. Jesus the Christ, who loves you and still wants you desperately. So now, fold your hands for heaven and wait upon the new Jerusalem. And streets of amber and streets of gold Castles high that words can't hold The love yous and the want yous And the desperate least And there's a well on the hill And the water's free Let your broken roads lead unto me And there's just one breath of life Jesus the Christ who loves you and still wants you desperately so now now's the time for healing and the secret the secret is in the song this guitar of seven strings so you might believe he loves you and still wants you desperately this guitar a seven strings so you might believe he still loves you and still wants you desperately well done sir well done that was really good. Desperate. I'm proud of you. That's it. You want to close this on prayer as we go? Thank you. Yes. Uh, if you're in two with a friend and they're a true friend, sometimes the Lord will separate you for a while. But, but in the end, God said, you know, if I will let the disciples be my friend, yes. you better not break up your friendship. You better keep it together. Forgive one another. Love one another. I love this brother in the Lord. And yet, you know, we kind of both started it, and I, and so, it is what it is. but I got to be careful. I think he's the only one I ever fight with. <laughs> I don't fight with anybody else but him. So anyway, here's the thing. Let's pray right now. Do you have a friend out there you need to forgive? Give, him, give the Lord the name. Father, we forgive our friends. Help us to reunite. Help us to love one another as you commanded us to love one another. Lord, you said that you would, we would, they would know us mm -hmm. as your disciples if we love one another. Right. But if we continue to fight and hate one another, we're not acting like your disciples. So Lord, help me not to ever fight with my friends. I want to be friends with them for life. And God's given me a whole bunch of new ones here in California. Plus, Michael and I have become great friends, everyone out there, and they have too. We've become great friends. Let's keep that friendship. Mm, yes. Can we? Fire. Jesus yes. approves of it, right? Yes. Let's see. Yes. Well, we'll close eventually. Yes, we'll be friends. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, because of time. I have to break this up. I want to thank the great Michael John for mm -hmm. singing. Thanks. His, he, it always touches me, these special songs. He's from the heart. He's amazing. And, of course, the gentleman herself, uh, she just always brings back these things that we all need to learn and know. Mm -hmm. She's so gifted in speaking. Till next week, I'm Dr. Ken. We'll see you on Pastor's Love Respect. you, Thanks, love you, love you. Perspective on the Marketplace Network.